internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad, Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I'm here at the Magic Lounge, too. <laughs> and I've got the, a new guest online. I've got four of these things that I'm doing today back-to-back, -to -back, so uh, today's a, a busy day, which is good. So um, you're there, right? Yeah. I forgot your name already because I do have four interviews. What's your name? Barnett. David Barnett. And David's about uh, finances and money, am I correct? Yeah, I, I, I help people buy and sell businesses. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You're married, you got kids, you got pets. Are you, what are you into? Well, I'm a divorced single dad. I've got two kids. And Boys? Uh, they, yeah, I, I, I built a, um, a, a business around a previous career. I used to be a business broker, helping people list and sell their businesses and how you go find buyers for them. And the year that I got out of business brokerage was the year that I got divorced and I you know, the worst thing that could ever happen to an entrepreneur, Brad, happened to me. I ended up having to get a job. Ugh. And as soon as I got into that job, my phone started to ring. And it was people calling me because they'd been referred to me saying, hey, I, I'm thinking about selling my business. I heard you're the guy that can help me. Or I'm trying to buy this business. And I want someone to help me look through everything. And I heard that you could help me. And basically, I got drawn back into the world of buying and selling businesses, but in a very different capacity. So, so now instead of being a broker and, and earning a commission on the sale of a business, I basically have a whole menu of different services that I do for people in on both the buyer and the seller side. And people simply pay me for helping them as they go through their own journey. 80% uh, of businesses that are, are bought or sold are done so privately. They don't go through the hands of a broker or any other kind of intermediary. So it's actually the bigger part of the market. And, um, you know, I work with people much the same way an accountant or a lawyer would. I simply charge people for the things that I help them with. So, so you kind of sort of somewhat of a consultant or a counselor or a, yeah. cause that's very important. I had a, an expo business that, uh, I was always concerned about if something was to happen to my business partner, do we have things set up so that I'm not left, you know, pushed under the bus kind of thing. So that's kind of from your experience with the divorce and things like that. If a, if a death was to happen with a business partner, you have to think about that kind of stuff well in advance of what's going to happen. Because if, you know, a crazy wife comes in and decides to take over or a, a husband, spouse, either way, and if they don't understand the business, that could just collapse the whole thing. Well, you know, partnership issues is a whole other area and, and planning for the untimely departure of one of your partners is, is something that people need to partnership mm -hmm. um, I work with a lot of people who are trying to improve their businesses because they want to make them more saleable one day and one of the things that I always say to people is that you need to be prepared to sell your business at any time because the, the five biggest reasons that people sell businesses are burnout and fatigue uh, the need to relocate divorce poor health and retirement and only one of those five things are something that you plan for Right. The other four are things that creep up on you and just happen. And and I, as I explained to buyers, you know, businesses that are good, profitable small businesses that, that produce a, you know, a living for someone and help someone support a family, they come on the market because of a pressing personal concern in the form of a salary, not because someone's trying to cash out or you know um, take the money bags to the to the bank. People need their small business because it's the source of their income and something has to motivate them to want to sell it to actually move on to the next stage of their life and that's usually one of these pressing personal needs. Now that's and, something also that's very important if a person is looking to buy a business they need to know what's going on and what might happen what what they might be um, inheriting right? Well and, and the fear on the part of the buyers is that the, the seller is trying to commit some kind of fraud that the business is actually a very poor one something wrong in the business it's not doing well and so buyers often ask what the motivation of the seller is and it's 
because they, they feel like they need to figure out why the seller wants to sell to ensure it's not one of these bad reasons. And when they hear that it's burnout and fatigue, a lot of buyers actually get suspicious of that, even though it is, in fact, the biggest reason sure. why people sell. And if you compare it to the world of employed people, it really makes sense. Think about it, Brad. I mean, if you had a job somewhere for 15 or 20 years, you might become bored of that, right? You, you, it it mm-hmm. might become something that you need to change. For that employed person, though, what they do is they simply go looking for a new job because they're going to find one. They quit. But for the person that owns their own business, they need to figure out what they want to do. But they can't just quit that job because in most cases, a great deal of their family's wealth is tied up in that business. Right. They need to sell it so they can recapture some of that capital. to move on to the So how long have you been at this? Uh, I was a business broker starting in 2008. And I left my business brokerage in 2011. And then I got drawn back into this consulting thing really in, in 2012. And eventually it became so big that I left that job that I was forced to take um, when I got divorced. And uh, I've been doing this full time now for about, well, it's been over a year. Oh. I've got a couple of books under my belt. Congratulations. Yeah, show, show us your book. My latest book in April came out called How to Sell My Own Business. Love it's it. basically a, a step-by-step guide for business owners on, number one, how to choose the right business broker if they want to go down the road of having a broker work with them. And then the second half of the book is how do you do it on your own if you decide that you don't want to use a broker. And and basically, I I break down the process and I show them what specific tasks or areas a business owner is going to need help with in order to accomplish this properly on their own. Um, You know, the worst thing that can happen for a business seller is to find a buyer and then not be properly prepared to handle that buyer's questions or, or... you know, not have the information. So many times I'm, I'm working with buyers and they'll tell me these, these crazy stories of, of having a really great conversation with a seller. And then when they ask for the latest financial statements, the person says, well, that's all at the accountant. I should have it in two months. Well, y- you can't create a momentum of sale. You right. can't, you know, dive into things if the information simply isn't available. And it always shocks me how many business owners will actually start to go and talk with people potentially about buying their business without getting their stuff together. So is this something that you offer, like just like an initial consultation, if you will, so that people could just connect with you on Skype or like we're doing now and just, or a phone conversation, just to ask some basic questions to see if you guys vibe and if they're going to buy or sell a business or if they're looking to get into business in any way? Well, what, what, uh, basically I have two websites, one, how to sell my own business.com, which is all about sellers and people go on there all the time. And there's a link to my YouTube playlist on buying and selling businesses. There's over 80 videos on there right now, as well as a couple of free special reports that they can download. Um, and, and then the book, if they want to read that. And when people go through that education process, if they then want to reach out to me and ask how I can help them specifically, then I'm more than happy to talk to people. Um, and then I've, I've got the process broken down for sellers into five steps for people who want to buy a business. The website is businessbuyeradvantage.com. And over there, again, there's my YouTube videos, but I also have a, a nine hour course. It's based on my full day seminar that I've been teaching since 2009 about how to buy a business. <clears throat> Excuse me. The advantage of course of, of an online course, Brad is that people are free to start and stop it as they please and, right. and, and replay things they don't quite understand. It comes with a 50-page workbook, and literally hundreds of people all around the world take that course and, uh, and then get back to me when they've found that specific course that they're, they're interested in looking at. Okay. <coughs> so they can kind of kick the tires and stuff and get to learn a little bit of stuff uh, in advance. Well, well again, I don't like... Next process, you... you you need to educate yourself and figure out exactly how it's going to take place. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things that I do when I'm working with people one-on-one is creating expectations, showing them what is going to happen and what they can expect. When when people don't have the proper expectations, they can actually find a good deal and not recognize it. Got it. Well, again, I don't like to do these initial interviews too long because I don't want people to take people's time. It's just really to get to know who you are and what you do and everything. And then uh, what I do with these is I put them up on YouTube and then put the YouTube embed code on different blogs and propagate it out to social media. So we'll be putting your links and things in all these things so they can find you and do some searches and, and connect. And uh, 
So if you want to stick around, we'll chat a little bit after, but I'm going to sign this one off. And um, so we, we kind of already figured out kind of why you did this. You got in this situation of a divorce and all of a sudden realized you didn't want to be employed with some by someone else and you started your own deal. But yeah, it, uh, and, and it, it's more than that, Brad. Um, you know, when you have that nine to five job and your kids get off school at two o'clock in the afternoon, that means you have to send them to daycare or something. Right. My my attitude has always been that I want to be that caretaker. I want to be the person that takes care of the kids. So, so when the consulting started to take off, I realized, hey, you know what? If I change my lifestyle a little bit, I can actually create a livable income while only working from eight in the morning till two in the afternoon, you know, a couple of evenings a week, you know, for some some phone calls for people out of time zone and things like that. Got it. And it means that I'm able to work with people all around the world and provide for that family while still taking my kids all the way off to school and I don't have to send them to daycare. So well, that's, uh... it's building the lifestyle you want, right? There's a friend of mine, Rhonda Swan. She's the unstoppable mama, and that's what her whole thing is about. So she doesn't have to send her kids off to be locked up in a little uh, kitty prison is basically what I call it. Okay, well, I appreciate you taking the time. And again, if you want to stick around, we'll chat a little bit. And I'm going to sign this one off and propagate it out to the universe. So appreciate you for taking the time on Synergy Cafe. Be well.